Florida man has had some crazy escapes, usually with the police in tow, but every streak has to come to an end. Today we'll pay tribute to those fearless Florida men and women who are no longer with us. It's time for Dumb Ways to Die, Florida Edition. A salesman from Hialeah was in a hurry in 1993, likely on the way to his next big hustle, but he may have been in a bit too much of a hurry. He was near Lantana and witnesses said he was going around 80 miles an hour when his car swerved into the median lane and crashed right into a pole, killing the unfortunate driver instantly. It seemed to be a standard crash until officers checked what was on the man's body. It was an open sales manual, indicating that he was in the process of reading as he was speeding through Florida. Looks like it wasn't just texters in the future who multitask themselves to death. Self-improvement is a good thing, but it's not always a do-it-yourself operation. Vera Lawrence was a middle-aged secretary in Miramar, but she always wished she was a little more uh, prominent in certain areas. She didn't want a boob job or plump her lips, she wanted to supercharge her butt. She couldn't afford high-end plastic surgery, so she attended a questionable plastic surgery party hosted by a friend. Mark Hawkins, a wannabe plastic surgeon from South Carolina, would visit these parties and give women injections of silicone for a fraction of the price. After Hawkins left, Lawrence started having trouble breathing. She was rushed to the hospital where she died. The cause of death? Silicone embolism, after the injections had entered her bloodstream. It was the end of Hawkins' enterprise as he faced serious jail time for manslaughter. Not even the happiest place on earth is safe from bouts of bad judgment. Disney World is known for its water activities and some can be a little more than risky. When Patricia Shank and her son Brian were visiting the park in 1989, they decided to check out a small speedboat and zoom around the Seven Seas Lagoon, filming their friends and family as they water skied. But they veered into the path of a large ferry that was transporting passengers to the Magic Kingdom. While the ferry sounded the alarm, Shank wasn't able to steer away in time and was killed when the ferry hit her boat. The ferry crew rescued Brian, but the Shank family rejected a settlement offer from Disney and geared up for a bitter lawsuit against the happiest place on earth. Sometimes pride goes before a fall. Molly German was a former gymnast in high school, but she hadn't gone professional. Still, she thought she was pretty flexible. And while staying at a hotel with a friend in North Fort Myers, she decided to put that to the test. She called out her friend and yelled, watch to see what I can still do, and jumped up to the railing of the second floor balcony. She proceeded to do a handstand on the thin railing and lost her balance and plunged to the hotel patio below. She was killed instantly, and police ruled out foul play. It was just a simple case of a gymnastics move that might have looked pretty cool but was in the worst place possible. Sometimes when you gotta go, it's best to hold it. Sean Paul Montero liked to party and he had enjoyed a wild night at Pompano Beach Bar in 2008. But he forgot one critical detail before he left the bar. He didn't visit the little drunk's room before getting in his car. His first bad decision was driving drunk, but that wouldn't be what would get him on the list. As he was driving home, nature's call hit him hard. He pulled over at the side of the I-95 freeway and decided to urinate only to find that freeway traffic didn't make for a great bathroom. So he decided to climb the freeway wall only to lose his balance and fall 65 feet to his death. When they say do not attempt this stunt, sometimes it's best to listen. It was 2008 and the show Jackass was at its prime. Led by Johnny Knoxville, the trained stuntmen and professional idiots entertained people by seeing how much they could injure themselves. Cameron Biberly and Michael Smith were huge fans and they decided to pull off a stunt of their own. Biberly would ride in a shopping cart and hold on to Smith's SUV while Smith drove and picked up speed. But as they started their stunt, they hit a bump in the road, a literal one, as the cart's wheels hit a speed bump. The cart overturned, Byerly went flying, and his head fatally hit the parking lot. Smith wound up being sentenced to four years in prison for manslaughter, something that never happened on Jackass. They weren't the only daredevils to meet a bad end. Cleman Plaza in Tallahassee was a tall structure, serving as a multi-level parking garage, and to a young man named Brian, it looked like the perfect place to relive some past glory. Brian was known amongst his friends as a daredevil, and previously that had been used for good when he saved a friend from drowning. But by 2004, his thrill-seeking had taken a dark turn, especially when he fell in love with reality TV shows about dangerous stunts. And when he saw the banister at the parking garage, he saw his opportunity. But he wasn't just going to slide down it. Instead, he boasted that he would do a running leap onto the banister to begin his high-speed slide. Instead, he sailed right over the banister and into the gap, plunging 52 feet to his death. His friends were saddened, but not shocked. One even said that this wasn't the craziest thing Brian had done. When it comes to strange deaths, it takes all kinds. The death of Brian Loudermilk was a mystery. 
He was found in a specially dug ditch with his SUV wheel parked on a board over his chest. Latermelk had died from the pressure on his chest, but how? An investigation of his wife Stephanie gave the detective some clues, and it led them to an odd corner of the kink world. It seems Brian and his wife had been involved in making crushing videos sold on the black market, where Stephanie would step on small wild animals like mice, but they had apparently decided to move on to bigger things and thought a crushing video with Brian in the starring role would be the ticket to success. The wheel was too heavy for Brian, Stephanie faced criminal charges, and mice everywhere breathed a sigh of relief. Sometimes a few seconds can make all the difference. David Pedrosa was a daredevil, and that was clear to anyone who saw him rolling around Punta Gordo on his motorcycle, usually without a helmet. But in 2008, he pushed his luck a little too far. The drawbridge to Minnesota Key would be frequently raised to let ships through and Pedrosa wasn't willing to wait for the slow ship traffic. So he decided he would beat the gate, gunning his motorcycle and speeding forward as the gates came down. It wasn't the best idea, as the lowering gates clipped his head, throwing him from the motorcycle and dealing him a fatal head injury. No one knows if he would have survived if he had been wearing a helmet, but it probably wouldn't have hurt. When you race traffic, traffic usually wins. It was 2008 when Cami Caruso hit the jackpot winning tickets to a show of her favorite musicians, the Dave Matthews Band. She invited her friend Megan Thompson to join her and they went to the Ford Amphitheater, only for a massive thunderstorm to derail the performance. The girls were soaked in seeking shelter, but they didn't want to wait for the bus to get to the casino across the road. They decided to test their luck with multiple lanes of heavy traffic on Interstate 4. The young women raced across the highway only to be hit by a car. Then, that sent them flying into another lane where they were hit by several more cars fatally. Sometimes just getting wet is the smartest option. Sometimes you fish for big game and sometimes the big game get you. Gary Cagle loved the water. The avid fisherman and free diver was regularly searching for a big catch near the Florida Keys, but he didn't always stick to the law. Goliath groupers are a protected fish, but that didn't stop Cagle in 2006. He used his spear gun to pierce the fish's skin, only to be surprised by just how big and strong it was. The fish bolted, yanking Cagle along with it. He got tangled in the wire and that's where his second mistake came in. He had forgotten to bring his knife. Unable to get free of the line and trapped underwater, Cagle eventually drowned. His body was found a day later, still tethered to the dead grouper, who no doubt became a legend among other fish for the day he reeled in the big one. But one man tested fate with an even bigger beast. Daniel Dukes was a drifter who mostly stayed below the radar, but he would become a household name in 1999 when his body was found at SeaWorld Orlando. Not only was he in the popular theme park, he was dead in the tank of Tilikum, a massive orca that was controversially kept to perform at the park. Tilikum was known to be aggressive, killing three people in total, but the other two were trainers. Dukes had apparently snuck into the park after dark, climbed into the tank, and decided to either swim with the massive sea creature or interact with it. The incident wasn't caught on camera, and what brought Dukes to this point is unknown, but getting up close and personal with an orca with a body count will rarely end well. And not even the famous are immune from dumb ends. Roy Halladay III was an acclaimed baseball player for the Phillies and Blue Jays and one of the most dominant pitchers of the day. But he was also troubled, and after retiring in 2013, he went down a bad path. He was piloting a single-engine plane around the Gulf of Mexico when it crashed, despite air traffic controllers not getting any distress signals from Halliday before the accident. It brought an end to the legacy of a talented ball player, but the post-crash autopsy revealed some disturbing things. Not only was Halliday's bloodstream full of multiple drugs, but he had been pulling off risky acrobatic maneuvers just above the water. He eventually climbed too high, the plane lost speed, and began one final free fall into the water. We return to Disney World for this next high-altitude death. It's not uncommon for people to get sick on Disney rides, including Splash Mountain. The themed flume ride takes you through several drops before plunging you down a massive chute, but one tourist handled his upset stomach in the worst way possible. Feeling ill, he decided he would get off, in the middle of the ride, with dozens of log flumes moving through the massive mountain at high speed. Sure enough, only seconds after he hopped out of his log to try to find the emergency exit, he was struck by another one coming down the pipe and fatally wounded. But no one made a worse decision at high altitudes than this last couple. It was 1991 and a mysterious accident had just occurred at Rainbow Lake in Florida. A small Piper aircraft had just crashed, killing its male pilot and his female passenger, who was also trained in flying. The plane had showed no sign of mechanical failure, but the explanation for the crash would soon become clear. Nakedly clear. When the cockpit was opened, the two deceased were found half-naked and not wearing their harnesses. 
Apparently, they had decided to join the Mile High Club while flying with fatal consequences. At least when people do it in the airplane bathroom, it won't take down the whole plane. Want to learn about the Florida men who survived? Check out Most Crazy Florida Man Stories. To learn about other Americans who tested fate and lost, why not watch Dumb Ways to Die USA Edition?